We have a traditional territory, but we do not have any land. And that's a part of why I'm standing here tonight, is to say that we do need land to keep our culture strong for our children and our children that aren't born yet. And it would be unfair not to have land for our children that aren't born yet, because without it, we won't be the solid nation anymore. I think our culture is very integral for this coast. I think it will be important for years to come. I think it's important that we have integrity into the land. I think uh, the message we bring is that the environment comes first. Everything else comes secondary, but for us to live on this land, Recently, we, uh, we came about a uh, project in our community, a solar project. Uh, we had seven partners and uh, we worked with uh, governments, uh, private sector. We put together a solar project that's the biggest in Canada. We, uh, before we started the project, we got all our members together. And uh, we had community meetings and we said, what can we do as a collective, as a, as a tribe? to make this world better. And that's why we have the solar project. But it'll be a start. It's not the end, it's just a start. And that is, is that if we can uh, not use fossil fuels as much, then maybe we can start working toward cleaning up the basin, cleaning up the inner harbor, cleaning up our streams, cleaning up our rivers, cleaning up our mountains, and educating people, and all of us working together for, uh, for a better place for the future, because I think we own our, uh, our great-grandchildren now, because uh, right now... Right now, we're coming to a turning point point in our uh, lives that if, uh, if, if we don't all stand together as one to uh, keep the integrity of these lands, I think that may be lost, but uh, that is uncertain at this time. I really don't know what the future has. But I know this, that our elders said, you always should be looking 100 years ahead. I don't think we're looking 100 years ahead. I think we're looking 5 to 10 years. And nobody knows what that looks like, and that scares me. Because I know that uh, with us trying to bring our streams and rivers back, uh, how will this compromise that? How are we going to uh, make sure that those resources are there and shared for generations to come? I, I can say one thing about Sandcut Beach and uh, our old home of Jordan River, that uh, both those areas, when I was growing up, uh, uh, they were not park, but everyone used it. It was great because there was no cost on it. And everybody used the resource and everyone respected it. The surfers respected the beach because of the, the waves. The fishermen respected the front end of there because of the halibut. And the people that hiked, hiked down the land cut respected it because it's such a beautiful place. Now that could change, and, and, and that would be a shame because uh, that integrity of what people do naturally uh, is in jeopardy now. And that is the sad. We're putting a price on everything we do. And that price is going to hurt us in the end because uh, maybe the prices go up too high. Maybe we can't afford to go walk on the beach anymore, and I don't want that to happen. Uh, a, a couple of these parcels in, in South in our traditional territory, uh, the Pahos area, we call it Kleilele. It means spring salmon place, the place where the spring salmon give themselves back to Mother Earth. Well, the, well that area there is integral for our people, for our survival. Uh, it's a place where we teach our children when we go and have our cleansing in the river. And uh, a lot of our territory is being uh, taken away from us. And we won't be able to use those cultural practices that we did in the past. And that concerns me.